GLC presents Brought to you by the donations of our faithful partners Shalom, I'm Eddie Chamney of Hebraic Heritage Ministries and we welcome you today to our study on the Hebraic roots of Christianity. We need to remember that when we're studying the Hebraic roots of Christianity, we must keep everything centered on Yeshua the Messiah. That's because it is written in Psalm chapter 40 and verse 7, Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. That verse is quoted in Hebrews in chapter 10 in verse 7 referring to Yeshua. And Yeshua himself stated in Luke chapter 24 in verse 44, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the Torah of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Yeshua himself stated that the totality of scripture, including the Hebrew scriptures, are written of him. So what that means is, when we're studying the Hebraic roots of Christianity, we need to keep our studies focused and centered on Yeshua. And in doing so, we are going to, in this program, be teaching on part two, Yeshua teaches Torah to the multitudes. And what we are seeing is that Yeshua is the lawgiver. James chapter 4 and verse 12, it says, there is one lawgiver that is able to save. The one that saves is the lawgiver. So Yeshua originally gave the Torah at Mount Sinai and now in his earthly ministry when he's teaching the multitudes he's teaching the multitudes the Torah. And he's teaching them in Matthew in chapter 5 in verse 1 from a mountain. But how is he teaching the Torah? Well he's teaching the Torah in parables and in teaching the Torah He's teaching what is regarded as the mysteries of the kingdom. In Matthew, in chapter 13, verse 11, Yeshua said, It's given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Now, the mysteries is what's referred to as the sowed level of the Torah. The primary level of the Torah is what is known as the Peshat, or the literal. But... The Peshat, or the literal, is just the outer shell of Torah understanding. The real meaning of the scriptures is the hidden meaning, the inner meaning, the heart meaning, the soul of the Torah. And the soul of the Torah speaks about the Messiah. It speaks about his redemptive plan. And the... Heart meaning of the text is understood at the so level. So what we're doing is we're looking at Yeshua teaching the multitude in Matthew in chapter 5. And while he's teaching to a literal multitude of people, his message on a deeper level is to the exiles of Israel, particularly to Ephraim or the northern kingdom scattered into the nations of the world because in Genesis chapter 48 and verse 19 in the blessing given to Ephraim he's regarded as a multitude of people or a multitude of nations and so in last program we're starting to go through Matthew chapter 5 breaking it down and showing how Yeshua is teaching literally the multitudes in his presence but on the deeper level the exiles of Israel that they need to return to the Torah they need to return to him and so in continuing looking at what he is teaching in Matthew in chapter 5 in verse 6 Yeshua said blessed are they that hunger 
and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So you've got to hunger and thirst after righteousness. So what is righteousness or the right way in which you are to live your life? Righteousness or the right way which you are to live your life or right living is following the Torah. As we can see in Deuteronomy in chapter 6 in verses 24 and 25 as it is written and the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God for our good always that he may preserve us alive as it is this day and it shall be our righteousness or the right way that we are to live our lives if we observe to do all the commandments before the Lord our God as he has commanded us and then in Psalm 119 in verse 40 and verse 172 it is written behold I have longed after your precepts quicken me in your righteousness the precepts of God the Torah of God is his righteousness and Psalm 119 verse 172 it is written my tongue shall speak of your word, for all your commandments are righteousness. His word, his commandments, his precepts, his statutes are righteousness. So, when Yeshua said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for the Torah, for the word of God, for they will be filled. They will be satisfied. Now, in Matthew, in chapter 5, in verse 7, Yeshua goes on to teach, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So, who are these merciful who obtain mercy? The merciful follow the Torah. As we can see in Psalm 18, verses 21 through 23, and then in verse 25, as it is written, For I have kept the ways of the Lord, and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from mine iniquity. So it's talking about following and keeping the Torah. And to those who seek to follow and keep the Torah, it says in Psalm 18, verse 25, With the merciful, you will show yourself merciful. So the first occurrence of the word merciful is the Hebrew word Hasid, which means a holy or a godly person. With the holy or godly person, you will show yourself merciful. That means to be good, to be kind. And what's the ultimate mercy that the God of Israel shows? Is that even though we break his covenant, we sin, that if we will repent of our sin and seek to follow his ways he will forgive us of our sin and he will instruct us through the help of his Holy Spirit how to follow his Torah continuing on Yeshua's teachings to the multitude Yeshua taught in Matthew in chapter 5 verse 8 blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Who are the pure in heart? The pure in heart are those who love the Torah and who follow the Torah. Psalm 19 and verse 8, it is written, The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure. It's the commandment of the Lord 
that is pure. Psalm 119, verse 140. Your word is very pure, therefore your servant loves it. What's his word that is pure that his servant loves? Psalm 119, verse 97. Oh, how I love your Torah. It is my meditation all the day. So the pure or the pure in heart love the Torah or the word of God. So blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are those who love the God of Israel, who loves his commandments, who loves his ways. For they will see or they will know God. Matthew in chapter 5 in verse 9, Yeshua teaches, Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the children of God. Who are the peacemakers? The peacemakers are those who follow the Torah. Psalm 119 and verse 165. It is written. Great peace or shalom have they which love your Torah and nothing shall offend them. Malachi in chapter 2 and verse 6 it is written the Torah of truth was in his mouth and iniquity was not found in his lips he walked with me in peace the Torah of truth was in his mouth and he walked with me in peace so Yeshua taught blessed are the peacemakers, those who love and follow the Torah, for they will be called the children of God. You see here how Yeshua, beginning in verses 3 through 9, which we have covered, he's just using different terminology to refer to the Torah and those who seek to follow the Torah and how they will be blessed in doing so. Now, ultimately, what it means to follow the Torah, it means to follow Yeshua, because he is the lawgiver. If you follow Yeshua, you follow the Torah. If you follow the Torah, you follow Yeshua, because as we covered a couple programs ago, Israel, Torah, and the Messiah are one. You cannot separate the Messiah from the Torah, or the Torah from the Messiah. Continuing on in Matthew in chapter 5, in verse 10 and verse 12, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. So you're blessed if you're persecuted for righteousness sake even as the prophets were persecuted for righteousness sake. What were the prophets persecuted for? They were persecuted for trying to show the people the God of Israel where they had departed from Torah and how they returned to the Torah path. Second Kings in chapter 17 and verse 13 it is written yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets saying so this is the message of the prophets turn from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the Torah which I commanded your fathers and which I sent to you by my servants the prophets so the message of the prophets is to follow the Torah of the God of Israel. But they were persecuted, meaning they were rejected. Their message was rejected. Because it says in 2 Kings chapter 17, verses 14 and 15, Notwithstanding, they would not hear, but hardened their necks, like to the neck of their fathers. They did not believe in the Lord their God, and they rejected His statutes and His covenant that he made with their fathers. Now we're going to look at Matthew in chapter 5 in verse 14. You are the light of the world. 
A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. And so it says, you are the light, and then a city that is set on a hill. When he's talking about the city that is set on a hill, he's talking about Jerusalem. Jerusalem is to be a light to the world. Why? Because the Torah is to be taught from Jerusalem, as we're told in Isaiah in chapter 2 and verse 3. But you are to be the light of the world because the Torah is called light. And the people who follow the Torah are to be a light to a dark world. A dark world is a world that does not follow the Torah. So we can see how the nation of Israel is to be a light to the world in the Sanchino, Midrash Rabbah, volume 9, page 38, where it is written, Israel are light to the world, as it says, and the nations shall walk in your light. And that is Isaiah in chapter 60 and verse 3. So Jerusalem is a city surrounded by mountains. Remember, Torah is taught from a mountain. Psalm 125 and verse 2. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people. From henceforth, even forever. And so the city that is set on a hill is Jerusalem. But the people of the God of Israel are referred to as being a city. Now, the city of Jerusalem is also called Zion, or in Hebrew you would say Zion. In Isaiah, in chapter 2, and verse 3, at the end of the verse it says, For out of Zion, or Zion, shall go forth the Torah, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So, Zion and Jerusalem are synonymous terms. So, Jerusalem is a city set on a hill that is supposed to shine, be a light to the nations. But Zion is also a term for the people of the God of Israel. As we can um, see... In Isaiah, in chapter 51, the last part of verse 16, it is written, And say unto Zion, you are my people. So the city that is set on a hill, that is to be a light to the world, is the city of Jerusalem, but it refers to the people of the God of Israel. And Jerusalem in Hebrew is Jerusalem. It means the Lord sees peace. And who are the peacemakers? Those who follow the Torah. So Jerusalem, the city, and the people are linked. They're synonymous with each other. They're to be the light of the world because they are followers of the Torah. And the Torah is light. Proverbs in chapter 4 in verse 18, it is written, But the path of the just is as the shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23, it is written, For the commandment is a lamp, and the Torah is light. So you are the light of the world. You are a people that follow the Torah. And a people that follow the Torah, a people that is set on a hill, should let their light shine before men, that they may see your good works, that they see how you follow Torah, and give glory to God the Father. As we see here in Matthew, in chapter 5, and verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify 
your Father which is in heaven. And then it also says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 15, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all that are in the house. And so you are to follow the Torah, and the light of the Torah is to be seen by others so that your light will cause them to come to the light. The Torah is for all nations. The Torah was given to the nation of Israel, but the nation of Israel is to be a light to the nations, to draw the nations to the Torah. As we can see in Deuteronomy, in chapter 4, in verse 5 and 6. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that you may do in the land where you go to possess. Keep therefore and do them. That is to follow the Torah. Because this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which the nations will hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and an understanding people. For what nation is there so great who has God so near unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this Torah which I set before you this day? Now, in... Matthew in chapter 5 and verses 17 through 19, Yeshua teaches, Think not that I've come to destroy the Torah or the prophets. I've not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Now, this phrase, destroy the Torah and fulfill the Torah, is a Hebrew idiom. And let me tell you about a source where you can find what I'm about to say. In the book, Understanding the Difficult Words of Jesus by David Biven and Roy Blizzard Jr. In explaining these verses, they will tell you that um, the verse really doesn't make sense in Greek. It's only in the Hebrew and the Hebraic understanding does it make sense that Destroying the Torah is a Hebrew idiom for incorrectly interpreting the Torah and incorrectly teaching it. Fulfilling the Torah is correctly teaching the Torah and correctly teaching the Torah. And so Yeshua said, I've come to give you the correct understanding and the correct teaching of the Torah. Why? Because he's the lawgiver. He knows the meaning and the intent of the Torah because he's the one that gave it. And so not only am I going to correctly teach you the Torah, but in Matthew chapter 5 verse 18 he says, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the Torah, till all be fulfilled. Now, the jot is a reference to the smallest letter in the Hebrew alphabet. That is the Hebrew letter Yod. And it kind of looks like an apostrophe. And then the tittle is a reference to the decoration crowns that in a Torah scroll is on some of the Hebrew letters. And so Yeshua said, not only have I come to correctly teach you the Torah and to give you the right interpretation, but not only will every letter of the Torah be fulfilled, but even the decorations on the letters will be fulfilled. And then he says in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 19, Whosoever therefore will break one of the least commandments, and teach men to break the commandments will be least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever will do the commandments and teach the commandments, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. I want you to notice this group that Yeshua is referring to 
one group is regarded as being great and another one least. And what's the difference? The great follow the Torah and teach others to follow the Torah. The least do not follow the Torah and do not teach men to follow the Torah. So Yeshua says, I'm going to give you the correct interpretation of the Torah and every letter of the Torah and even the decorations on the letters will come to pass and those who do the Torah and teach it to others will be called great in my kingdom. Now he's speaking to the multitudes and the multitudes is a reference to Ephraim, the northern kingdom scattered in the nations. And what does it say about Ephraim? In Hosea in chapter 8 verses 11 and 12. Because Ephraim has made altars to sin. Altars shall be made unto him to sin. I've written to him Ephraim the great things of my Torah. But they were counted as a strange thing. So Ephraim regarded the Torah as a strange thing. And Yeshua is coming and speaking to the multitudes. Which on the deeper meaning is a message to Ephraim scattered in the nations. And said I'm the lawgiver. And... I'm going to correctly teach you the Torah, and every letter of it will come to pass. You should no longer regard the Torah as a strange thing. Now, believers in Yeshua as the Messiah ought to walk, or live our lives even as He walked. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 6. And Yeshua followed the Torah. Now He's teaching the multitudes. He's teaching His followers to do the same. As He said in John chapter 14 verse 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. Shalom in Yeshua the Messiah. Amen.